Let's take this boring and basic library table and turn it into something fun. One of my absolute favorite things to do is to take a piece of boring furniture that doesn't have any detail on it and add all kinds of detail. Another one of my favorite things to do is to paint with lots of layers and use a wet distress to bring them all through, giving a wonderfully aged and complex finish that looks really difficult, but is actually quite easy to do. In this video, I'm gonna show you exactly step-by-step step what I do to get this amazing finish. Here's one more look at the before before we get started. My name is BJ, my business is called Junked Up, and let's go. As with any project, the first thing I did was go through and make any repairs. This one was pretty easy, I just needed to tighten things up and then fill in the recessed screws with some wood buttons. I probably could have filled that hole with some wood filler also, however, I'm working inside and I didn't want to have to do any sanding and I had the wood buttons on hand, plus they give a nice polished finished appearance. After all the repairs are made, it is time to clean. I don't care what kind of paint you're using, it is always important to clean your piece of furniture. I'm using Durtex, which is an ammonia-based foaming cleaner to clean this piece of furniture with, but you can use whatever you've got. You just wanna make sure there's no oily residue, no greasy residue, no dust, no dirt. You wanna start with a good clean surface. I also needed to sand this piece a little bit because this is not real wood. This is not a high quality piece of furniture and I needed to make sure that my surface was prepared to give that paint something to stick to. I start by applying a single coat of DIY paint in the color Old 57 to my entire piece of furniture. There are two ways that I am going to add details to this piece. The first is by doing a raised stencil. I'm gonna use the Indian Inlay Stencil from Cutting Edge Stencils. I like this because it comes in multiple different pieces and I can pick and choose which pieces I'm going to use. I am not one for perfectionism, as we all know. However, I am going to measure to find the middle of my tabletop so that I can get the stencil placed pretty much in the middle. So I'm using some painter's tape to hold my stencil in place because I've done this a million and one times. However, I highly suggest that you use a spray adhesive made for stencils to hold your stencil in place. It's a lot easier. There are several different mediums that you can use when doing a raised stencil. I like this one because I have the stuff on hand and I just think this is easy. So I'm using salt wash, which is a paint additive in powder form, and I mix it to my paint until I get the consistency that I want. I just add a little bit of the powder at a time so that I can look at the consistency and decide whether this is gonna work for me or not. So it took me about three times of mixing this up till I got the consistency that I wanted. You kinda want it to be like cake frosting. And then it's just a matter of spreading your mixture over your stencil. I like to use that offset spatula. Um, I hold it at kind of a slight angle and just trowel the mixture over the stencil. So this particular stencil has been used a lot. So it's not in the most perfect condition and I didn't use the spray adhesive so you'll see it moves just a little bit I'm okay with that because I'm not looking for anything perfect and it's still gonna look great as you can see when I pull it away here's a little pro tip for you is that move on to another section and don't do sections that are butted up right next to each other when you're doing a raised stencil because if you put your stencil down into the wet raised stencil area that you just did you're gonna smush it So that section right there in the front, I knew I wanted to add a little bit of detail and it's really hard to get a stencil up in there. And so I decided I'm just gonna use some air dry clay and one of the trimmings mold from IOD. I looked at trimmings one, trimmings two, and trimmings three, and ultimately decided on one of the pieces from the trimmings two mold. Air dry clay is super easy to work with. You just wanna rip off a piece from your brick 
kind of roll it back and forth in your hands a few times just to warm it up and make it a little bit more pliable. I like to roll mine kind of into a snake and then I basically just push it gently into the mold and it kind of just does what it does. I'm using that same offset spatula just to kind of shave off the back and make sure that I have a nice flat surface, but you can use a credit card or any other tool that you have. I don't use anything as a release. I feel like when I turn my mold upside down and I peel it back, I get a very nice easy release and that clay comes right out. I'm using Aileen's Tacky Glue to tack this on. I absolutely could have used that same wood glue that I used earlier for the repairs, which is the Gorilla Wood Glue. I have never used Aileen's Tacky Glue before and I basically just wanted to try it and see how it worked. And it worked great. I'm using a little painter's tape to hold this in place. I ultimately decided to just go ahead and lay this piece on its back because it was a lot easier to do it that way and that way I had gravity as my friend. The nice thing about the trimmings mold is that they all work so that you can fit the pieces together when you need a longer piece. Here's a little pro tip about how to keep your air dry clay nice and moist. I put mine in a Ziploc baggie, so I wrap it all up and then I stick a damp piece of paper towel in there, push out as much air as I can and seal it. And that helps trap the moisture in there and doesn't allow my clay to dry out. You will notice that I had a considerable amount of shrinkage. That is normal, and the easy way to fix it is just to take a little bit of additional clay, roll it up, and kind of stick it in where you need to. I'm using the end of the paintbrush just to kind of create a little bit of design to disguise where I've joined those pieces together. And once it's all painted, you'll never see it. After painting that little bit of trim with the old 57, this is pretty much what we've got. I am gonna go ahead and sand all of that raised stenciling because it's a little rough. Once you pull that stencil back and it all dries, you'll feel it, it's a little bit rough to the touch and I don't want my finished piece to feel like that. So I just took a little bit of sandpaper, I think this is a 220, and just gently go over it until it feels nice and smooth. And I feel like finally we're getting to the painting part. So I'm going to use three colors and I'm using a single brush for each color. I chose Mermaid Tail, Queen Bee, and Marquee. You don't have to use three colors. You can use as many colors as you want. You can use more, you can use less. I chose to do half of my piece in kind of what I call the warm colors and half of my piece in the cool color, which is the mermaid tail on one side and marquee on the other. The uniting force behind all of this for this design is two things. It's number one, the old 57, which is over the entire piece, and the queen bee, which is on both halves. So both of those colors serve as a piece of unity for this design. So I get it, it looks terrible, but this is where you have to trust me and trust the process. So now we're going to use DIY paint, weathered wood, and we're gonna paint the entire thing. I just did a single coat of weathered wood. Weathered wood is a beautiful brownish gray. It's warm, it's nice. It's basically like the color of weathered wood. I just wanna back up here for just one second and make sure that I mentioned that we are layering and not blending. So because we are layering paint colors, you wanna make sure that each layer is dry. So our old 57 was dry before we went ahead with the marquee and the queen bee and the mermaid tail. And then we let those three colors dry before we went on to the weathered wood. So right now you're wondering why the heck we put all those colors on to begin with, and I'm gonna show you right here. So right now I'm wet distressing. So I've got a lint-free cloth. It is damp, and I am rubbing that over where all of the design work is, and it's taking off some of the layers of paint. So I'm working my way through some of that weathered wood, and the more I press and the harder I press on it and the more that I go over it, the more layers of paint I'm taking off. So in some places I'm exposing just the mermaid tail or the queen bee or the marquee. And in other places I'm working a little bit harder and I'm actually exposing all the way down to that old 57 that we had when we first put the first coat of paint on.
This is a very organic process. There is no right way or no wrong way to do it. You just keep rubbing the paint off until you get something that you like. Start gentle. You can always go ahead and rub some more and take some more off. And even if you get to a place where you're like, ooh, I don't like that, I just took too much off, you can always repaint it. Just take some more weathered wood, paint back over it, and then try again. It's just paint, so you're not ruining anything. It's just paint. So I know it doesn't look like much yet because it's got kind of a cloudy appearance to it, maybe a little chalky, but just wait till we get the top coat on. This is a little bit of a messy process though. I'm gonna show you the aftermath. I went through a lot of cloths. Before we tackle the finishing on this project, I'm gonna take this moment to awkwardly ask you to like, comment, or subscribe. I'm also going to awkwardly tell you that if you would like to purchase any of the products used in this video, you can visit my website, the link to which is in the description box below. So let's talk about what's going on here. Check out the way the paint comes to life with the wax. I'm using DIY Paint Clear Wax, and you can see how it just really wakes up those colors and makes them so vibrant. It's absolutely amazing to me how this works. I like to use wax just because I like the application, I like the way it looks and feels, but you can use other top coats like Big Top or some other brush on water-based top coat. You definitely do wanna make sure that you use a top coat on your DIY paint. Not only because it wakes up the color and makes it look super amazing, but because of the nature of the DIY paint, it can be reactivated with water for quite some time. So you do wanna make sure that it is top coated. Plus, you just did all this work, you wanna make sure that everything's protected. And we're on to the final step, which is the buffing. I wait about 24 hours for the wax to dry and to get absorbed into the paint. And then I take a clean, soft, lint-free cloth and I buff it. It's just gently going over it, shining it up, making sure that there's no sticky spots, wiping away any wax that didn't get absorbed into the paint, and just giving it a once over and showing it some love. Because the details are what's really important about this project, I'm just gonna drop a couple more video and photos of the details so that you can really see them, get an appreciation for the layers of paint and all the work that went into this. Thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate you watching. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and I'll see you on the next one.